Well, we left the last video saying we need another way to measure spread, and we were looking at these different uh, quiz scores from class A and class B. So let's recall that the mean was a way to balance the deviations. So here we have plus 2 and plus 2, and here we have minus 2 and minus 2 from the mean, and the mean balances the deviations. The mean, this has a mean of 10, and the other one also has a mean of 10. If we look at this one, also has a mean of 10. On the plus side, we have plus 3 and plus 10. On the minus side, we have minus 5 and minus 8. So once again, we see that the mean balances the deviation. Now we're going to uh, talk about a type of measure of spread called the standard deviation. And it's a measure of spread associated with the mean. So think about if the mean measures, uh, or the mean balances the deviations, what standard deviation? I had a student who said they thought it was sort of like maybe the average amount of deviation. And that's actually a pretty good answer. It's not exact, it's not technically an average, but that's a pretty close definition of what it means. So let's look at this. If we were to make a little table of values where we have our data values, which are 8, 8, 10, 12, and 12, and we're going to look at the deviation from the mean of each data value. So 8 is 2 less than the mean, 0 or 10 is at the mean, and 12 is 2 greater than the mean. So remember that the mean equals 10 for each of those. So looking at class B, let's do the same thing. We have our data values, 2, 5, 10, 13, and 20, and we have our deviation from the mean. So this would be negative 8, negative 5, 0, 3, and 10. Now, if we were to average the deviations, that would be a problem, because if we add them up and divide by 5, they both equal 0, because when you add the deviations, they always equal 0. So how else can we come up with a numerical sort of average for the mean if we can't just add them and divide by 5? Well, one student suggested maybe taking the absolute value of all of these numbers, making them all positive, and then adding them up and dividing by 5. And that's not a bad idea at all. Um, however, that is not the, and there's actually, um, I think, a name for that. There is a statistic where you, take the, where you take the absolute values of all of the numbers and add them up and divide by 5, and there is, that is a sort of measure of spread, and it's a, that's a really good idea. However, there is um, formulas and statistics and, and models and statistics and graphs and statistics all have a very um, mathematical basis that is calculus-based often. And it turns out that in calculus, that pointy graphs like an absolute value graph, remember an absolute value graph looks like a V, it's very difficult to do calculus when you have a point in a graph. It's much easier to do calculus when you have a smooth curved graph like that. So an, a different type of function that we could do use to help figure out, to help deal with the fact that we've got positives and negatives would just be to square everything because x squared is just a nice curved graph and that works better for the underlying mathematics that are necessary for formulas and so forth. So we're going to square them all. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So we are going to do the square, deviation squared. Now I want to mention that the deviation is the x value of the data minus the mean. Okay, so we're just doing the x minus the mean squared. So this is negative 2 squared, which is 4. 
This is 4, this is 0, 4, and 4. And if we do the deviation squared here, this is going to be 64, 25, 0, 9, and 100. So let's think about taking the average of that. So if we add these up, this adds up to 16. If we add these up, it turns up adding up to 198. And so if we do 16 divided by 5, or 198 divided by 5, that's getting some sort of an average of these differences. However, notice that if I'm looking at the original data, think about these are quiz scores. We could think of these as 8 points, 10 points, 12 points, etc. My mean is 10 points. But now all these numbers are points squared. So this would be 16 points squared. I don't want my mean in points and my standard deviation in points squared. I want my standard deviation in points. So to find the standard deviation here, I'm going to say standard deviation is equal to the square root of 16 over 5. And here the standard deviation is equal to the square root of 198 over 5. So if I calculate those numbers, here's what I get. 1.789 and 6.293. So let me write those down and let's think about how those make sense. 1.789 points and 6. Point, oh, I forgot what it was now. 6.293 points. Oops, wrong thing. 6.293 points. So let's look at our numbers and see if that makes sense. Does it make sense that among these scores that the average amount or the typical amount of deviation from the mean is about 1.7 points? Notice that all four of these differ exactly two points, but here this one doesn't differ at all. So this differs zero points. So it makes sense so that the kind of the typical amount of variation is just slightly less than two points. Here our amounts of variation are all over the place. Negative eight, negative five, three, and ten. But 6.29 seems a pretty reasonable, like, typical amount of variation. So let's um, delve into this a little deeper. I want to look at the difference between a population standard deviation and a sample standard deviation. The, po the population standard deviation uses the symbol sigma. I'll just, this is sigma. It is a Greek letter, okay? Sigma. It's the square root of the sum of all of the deviations. Well, what is the deviation? The deviation is the x values, and usually a lot of times they're called x sub i, like x sub 1, the i is sort of the index, like x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, all the way up to however many data values there are, minus the mean, which we call mu. Okay, so I'm going to write down that this, I think I'm going to move this down a little bit here. Mu, this is, it looks like mu, but it's actually mu. And this is standard deviation and mean, okay, squared. This means sum, okay, that, that sigma means sum. So the sum of all the squared deviations divided by n, which is the sample size, or actually in this case the population size. Okay, so here's the population size because we're talking about population standard deviation. So imagine that I um, took the entire population of our class, of all of our AP Stat students, and I called that, that's my population of AP Stat students, and I got, took everybody's heights, I found the mean, I found the deviation from the mean for each one of my students, squared them, added them up, divided by the number of students, that would be the standard deviation for the population of all my AP Stat students. But so let's say I wanted to know the average height of everybody at the school. And so this, it calls for a slightly different formula and it's called s sub x instead of sigma sub x. We do the same thing. We take the sum of x sub i minus mu divided by, or, or squared, 
But instead of dividing by n, we divide it by n minus 1. Now notice when we divide it by n minus 1, this is this is a bigger, or this, sorry, this is a smaller denominator. So s of x is going to be slightly bigger than sigma of x because we're dividing by a smaller number. Now there, here's the reason we do this. If you go to the next page in your notes and go to the bottom of the page, you'll see why we do this. Okay, why divide by n minus 1 for sample standard deviation instead of by n? Dividing by n minus 1 increases the standard deviation slightly to compensate for the fact that not all samples will contain the smallest and largest data values in a population. So the true standard deviation needs to be a bit bigger than the sample indicates. The population standard deviation sigma is only divided by n. So I have to kind of pad my standard deviation a little bit to compensate for the fact that my sample probably doesn't contain as wide a range of data values as there are in the actual population. So hopefully that makes sense. So this is what you're going to see um, as the standard deviation formula on the AP exam. So this is going to be the AP exam formula for standard deviation. Now the good news is you probably will never use this formula on the AP exam, although you know, it's helpful to know where standard deviation comes from and what it means. You're going to be doing it mostly on the calculator. So let's take a look at what looks, what, how we would uh, do this on the calculator. And so I'm going to go to a list. I made this already. Uh, where am I? I've got to find my list that I was using. Okay, so here's the scores. Um, the scores for one of the classes, um, let me go up here. So here's 8, 8, 10, 12, 12, and 2, 5, 10, 13, 20. I called it scores and O scores for other scores because I forgot to call it like scores, A scores and B scores. That might might have been a better way to put it. Um, maybe I can call this A scores and B scores. Let's do that. B because we have class A and B. So A scores and B scores. All right. Now, um, once I put this list, this is a list and spreadsheet page, and I put my data in a list, then I can calculate the standard deviation as well as a lot of other helpful statistics by doing something called one variable stats. So I'm going to go to control doc, open a calculator pa page, and we're going to go to a menu that's going to be super helpful. You're going to do a lot of things in either probability or statistics, but statistics mainly. So we're going to go to st statistics, stat calculations, and one variable statistics. This asks for number of lists. Um, I usually just do one at a time. It's easier, so I'm just going to do one list. OK. My X list, I'm just going to pick my A scores, push OK. And notice it gives me this nice list of data. Here we have our mean. We have a couple things uh, that we can ignore. They don't really have anything to do with what we're doing. Now notice here, here's my sigma of x. This is what I calculated when I divided the square, the square root of 16 over 5. Um, this is when I divide by n. Notice here, the n minus 1, this is the sample standard deviation. So if that was just a sample from a class, I would use n minus 1 in the denominator when I divide, and I would end up with the square root of 16 over 4, which would give me 2. N tells me the number of data values, and look what other nice things I get here. I get the five number summary. I get the min, the Q1, the median, the Q3, and the max. Those are the numbers you use in a box plot. And I get the sum of the squared deviations right here, which is 16. Now I want you to notice that um, here the sample standard, the symbol for the sample standard deviation is used X bar. Um, so we differentiate between the sample and the population standard deviation, but this, oh sorry, I think I said standard deviation, I mean mean. But this, this x bar just represents the mean of the data that we just put in. So let's do the other one now. Um, so let's go to menu, and you're going to go to menu 6, 1, 1. Pick one list. Let's do our list of B scores now. Okay, and notice here we have our means 10, 
standard deviation, the population standard deviation that we calculated, but when we divided by 5 was the 6.293. But if I divided by 4 instead of by 5, notice I get a slightly bigger standard deviation if 5 were just a sample instead of a population. And here are the five, here's the five number summary, and here's the sum of the square deviations that we calculated. One last thing is how do we how do we write about standard deviation? And this video is getting long, so I want to finish up here. Um, let's go to the next page, and we'll do it in general, and then we'll do it a little more specifically for this data. Standard deviation tells us the typical amount that an individual data value varies from the mean. The typical amount that an individual data value varies from the mean. So if we go back to the previous page, in this case, if we add some context to this, we can say for class A, I'll just do it for one of the classes, for class A, the typical amount that a student's score varies from the class average of 10 points is about 1.8 points. Okay, notice I kind of abbreviated the 1.789. All right, so that's how you would describe, and this is important to be able to interpret standard deviation correctly. A couple other things about standard deviation. Because of the way standard deviation is calculated, we're looking at the, the the deviations from the mean, standard deviation is sensitive to outliers. If we have an outlier, it's going to change the standard deviation quite a bit. Um, look at the difference between class A, and we had class A with a standard deviation of 1.789, and class B with a uh, standard deviation of 6.293 because of how far out the data was spread. Make sure that you use standard deviation as a measure of spread when you use the mean for the center. When you're using the median for the center, we're going to be using a different measure of spread. We're going to be using the IQR, which is the, mid, the, the range of the middle 50% of the data. Um, and we can use range also, but IQR is kind of the, is sort of the, that typical amount of deviation, we can say it a little bit. It, it's really interpreted differently. It's the middle 50% of the range. Of the spread or the range. Okay, so the middle 50% of the spread um, there is in the, it's how far apart the middle 50% of the data is spread out. Okay, the middle 50% of the range in a way. Um, just to point out, there's a really helpful chart here that tells all about um, all the things we've done comparing mean and median. And that's the end of our, of our notes for 1.3.